I'm in glamorous Hollywood. Okay, it doesn't seem so glamorous on this boulevard. Hollywood can be a bit seedy, or at least touristy and superficial. It doesn't seem like a likely home for a Hindu Vedanta temple. Or maybe it's a good metaphor for the divinity within everything. I'm driving to the Vedanta Society of Southern California. I've been going there lately, and today a Vedanta celebrity is going to give a talk, Swami Sava Priyananda. He's great at elucidating these teachings, and that's important because the main practice of what's taught there is a path of knowledge. It's about studying the teachings enough to not only understand them, but to eventually have a breakthrough realization of the truth they point to. According to this tradition, this realization or enlightenment can come through a process of self-inquiry, a process of examining ourselves to come to a knowing of the absolute reality of who we really are, an infinite consciousness that, from our perspective, is perfectly at peace and happy. The premise of the non-dual teachings, or Advaita in Sanskrit, is that there is an ultimate reality beyond the conceptual distinctions of self and other, God and the universe, good and bad, distress and happiness, etc., beyond our normal relative dualistic experiences. That ultimate reality is perfect and complete, and therefore, if we identify with it, we can experience its inherent peace. But is it really possible to identify with the absolute reality when our normal thinking Thinking and acting has to be dualistic, discerning between good and bad, self and others, etc. Even if we come to realize the underlying absolute reality, we still have to live in this relative world. So why pursue enlightenment? This path of knowledge in Advaita Vedanta involves what's called Shravana, Manana, and Nididhyasana, listening, reflecting, and meditating. Listening to the teachings as I'm doing here with these lectures, and then reflecting on them and scrutinizing them more by asking questions and resolving doubts, and then meditating or dwelling on them for a period of time. We do so until one day finally coming to not only believe in the teachings, but to know them to be true. To know that the single underlying infinite reality we learn about is actually who we really are, and to be able to identify with it instead of identifying with our limited personal egos that are the source of all of our troubles, distress, and suffering. But regardless of this realization, while in these bodies and minds we still have to live with our personal egos, in this world of individual interactions. And so how do we reconcile this with the idea of oneness? That's what I ask Swami Sava Priyananda. My name is Anthony. Thank you, Swamiji, for ma making these ancient teachings so accessible and understandable. But even with this understanding of, the ap of us being the absolute reality, we still have to live in a relative world. Um, so even if I knew the oneness of being, if I really knew it, uh, I still can't act as if everything is one and the same. I have to still take care of myself as a separate individual and others. Um, so, my, so my question is, at best we could act harmoniously, right? So my question is, why not just go after piecemeal happiness where we can, take a broader perspective when things get too difficult, act compassionately and harmoniously, and that's what most of us do anyway. Why make such a big deal about this enlightenment project? Right. No, it's, it's a very good question, really. This may betray my skepticism that enlightenment, a perfect state of imperturbable peace and happiness, actually exists. But Swamiji responds by asking why not investigate our absolute nature and try to come to this realization ourselves? It's still a worthwhile pursuit, because our piecemeal approach to finding lasting happiness in worldly pursuits hasn't really worked out for us. In the end, enlightenment may not be achievable as a pursuit anyway. The Zen Buddhists may have gotten it right with the pathless path, to not have any gaining ideas in our practice, and when meditating, to just sit. As the saying goes, enlightenment may be an accident, 
but spiritual practice makes us accident prone. And as Rupert Spira says, we cannot go to ourselves by discipline or effort, we go there by love and surrender. Spiritual practice may set the stage and get us closer to it, but ultimately self-surrender may be what it takes. Speaking of surrender, I've realized I've been too much of a perfectionist with these videos, and now I want to spiritualize my vlogging, to turn it into a spiritual practice of letting go, of surrendering my ego to that impersonal driving force that compels me to make them. I get too caught up in the outcome of being too polished and perfect, but it's for personal and self-indulgent reasons only, to look and sound good and get my message across in a certain way. But I can't sustainably do a single man production and shouldn't make it look like that. So from now on, I'm gonna start doing more spontaneous daily vlogging to just capture myself in the moment of my spiritual journey. I'll still try to create a structure and story to what I present, but I won't recite from a script, for example. And that will be hard for me, so you may have to put up with me for a few videos. But speaking of someone who doesn't need a script, Okay, Nikhil, so tell me what you think. I know you're a spiritual seeker. Why pursue enlightenment? It's the question that I've been struggling with this last week, honestly. My whole life I've felt this grasping for enlightenment, just pursuing enlightenment, like meditation, all these other techniques, and, um, and they're all good. But I think it's interesting because what I've come upon in the last week was enlightenment is the letting go of all grasping. <laughs> but grasping for enlightenment is a bit uh, oxymoronic, right? Like it, 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 what this guy saw me, Sarvapriyananda was saying, quoting T.S. Eliot, right? Like it's finding the lock to the prison reaffirms the prison, right? And so pursuit is one thing, but I think the grasping for it, mm -hmm. meaning I don't have it now and I'm not going to be happy till I have it because it's this perceived state where there's only peace and joy and I don't have to feel anything negative. See, like that, I'm questioning. If I'm pursuing this imagined future state in order to not experience difficult emotions, for example, or difficult experiences, that's kind of antithetical to the definition of enlightenment, ironically, right? And so, you know, a mutual friend of ours, like, asked me, well, what if you're, you're, there's always divinity, always consciousness here, but what if you could never get enlightened? How would you live your life differently? How would you love yourself differently? If consciousness was already perfect before this creation, the only reason if consciousness has to create all this is to experience the humanness and the imperfection. You know, like I've been trying to say, well, what is it like if you could never achieve it in the future, right? How these practices to be as present as I can and, and enjoying every experience. How could I find joy and enjoy and embrace every experience, including the difficult ones, especially the difficult ones, right? Like if I'm feeling difficult things rather than pushing it away or saying, well, well I don't want to feel that, I, I want to resolve it and I want to fix it so I can get this perfect state. I mean, but that, but that means that's not very loving, that's not very enlightened as a practice to say I don't want to feel that. It's actually, what if I, le what if I go, okay, what I've been leaning into just literally in the last six, six days or seven days is okay if I could never if I was never to reach it what would I well I'd be cool with all the imperfection right now I would be more light I would be more joyful I would be more um, playful um, I, I like I would just I, I don't have to try to be anything else you know naturally just more playful and including with the difficult emotions including with the fears and insecurities you know like like it's easy to play playful when it's all roses and unicorns right and like and stuff right like but including oh even oh wow I'm feeling really insecure I'm feeling really sad okay I am here before I experience it I am here during the experience I'm here after the experience right and I may as well enjoy the experience because if I'm not gonna get enlightenment anyway, I'm literally leading into this thought now from going from I want enlightenment to what if I can never get it? Well, I may as well enjoy this, it's happening. <laughs> it's happening. Oh wait, but I'm still here in spite of it happening. <laughs> I'm still here, it didn't erase me, in, in, you know? Mm -hmm. And I think that's, uh, I don't have a clear answer, but that's what I'm playing with right now. Did you enjoy the experience today? Yeah, this is a fun. These are these experiences are easier to easier to enjoy. <laughs> <laughs>
By the way, I forgot that in Hinduism and Buddhism there's a whole reincarnation thing. For the enlightened person, when his body dies, he doesn't get reborn in this cycle of birth and death anymore. And he's free of the suffering that's part of it. But I feel like I'd still rather be continually reincarnated into this world and take my enlightenment with me. To be able to continue to be free while living, to enjoy the play of this world, the adventure of it, while still being free of the feelings of distress, dissatisfaction, and unfulfillment that normally are a part of it. I'm not going to speculate on the afterlife, and I can't know for sure if a state of permanent and complete freedom from distress and suffering is even possible. But I am after some amount of relief that comes with at least understanding and believing that a deeper part of us, our true self, is already perfect and complete, is already trouble-free and naturally at peace. I don't know if I'll ever be able to identify with this one day, but at least it's where I think I'm headed on this spiritual path. Like and comment if this resonated with you and subscribe below to follow me on my journey. See you next time. Thank you for lulling me with a false sense of security with your teachings. I got so convincing. <laughs>